If you've been letting Final Cut Pro automatically apply corrective LUTs to your log footage upon import, you are 100% doing it wrong. In this video, I'm going to prove to you how I know this and show you what you should be doing instead. And I'm gonna show you my workflow for applying creative LUTs to my log footage. Let me first start though with showing you why you should never let Final Cut Pro apply those corrective LUTs automatically. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at this really ugly shot here. I just shot with my iPhone in Final Cut camera in the log color space. You can see that I shot it in log because the colors are desaturated and there's not a lot of contrast. But when I go to import it in Final Cut Pro, you can see that it's got more contrast and saturation. It looks like it's already been somewhat color corrected. So now that the clip is imported, we can see that the LUT has been applied to it. And we can tell for sure if we select our clip in the browser and in the info inspector, drop down from basic to extended. And here on the camera LUT line, you can see that it's been set to Apple log, which is the proper corrective LUT for this particular clip. And so what that corrective LUT is doing is normalizing the exposure and color values in my shot. So it looks more true to life before you start applying more advanced color corrections. And if I open my scopes, you can see that with this corrective LUT applied, the ranges on my exposure and saturation look pretty good. And if you don't know how to read the scopes, that's a separate video I will link to down below. So that's what your video is gonna look like if you let Final Cut Pro apply that Apple Log LUT automatically. But using the same exact LUT, you can get a totally different look if you apply it manually using the custom LUT effect in the effects browser under the color category. So I'm gonna drop this shot here into my timeline and open my comparison viewer and save a frame of this clip with that LUT automatically applied so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So this image here is just a still snapshot of what we've got going on in our timeline at this exact moment. Now I'm going to select that clip in my timeline and I'm going to disable that automatically applied LUT by dropping down and selecting none. And now we're back to seeing our original log shot with no LUT applied. Now I'm going to drag and drop that custom LUT effect onto the clip in my timeline. And in the video inspector, under LUT, I'm going to drop down and select choose custom LUT. And I'm going to import that Apple Log LUT manually into my Final Cut app and I only need to do this one time. And I'm going to close my scopes and my browser and you can see this clear side-by-side -side view of the difference between the appearance of my clips when I let Final Cut Pro automatically apply that LUT, that's the one on the left, and when I do it manually on the right. But they don't just look different, when you use the custom LUT effect, you can modify the mix of that LUT. So you have a lot more control over the way it looks. So clearly applying the corrective LUT manually is the way to go. Now, if you're wondering how you can get your hands on that Apple Log LUT to apply it in that way, I will link to it down below. You can actually pull it from the Apple developer website. But what about other types of cameras that you're probably shooting with? Where do you get the corrective LUTs for those? You can just search online the make and model of your camera and the manufacturer of that camera should have downloadable LUTs that are the correct corrective LUTs for your specific camera. And by the way, if you really want to master Final Cut Pro and strengthen your editing skills, you may want to enroll in my best-selling courses, Final Cut Rockstar and Rockstar Next Level, now available at jenjager.com. I give you all the media to download so we build a project side-by-side -side together, getting more and more complex as we go. So sign up today and see why I'm in the top 5% of course creators on Thinkific. So now that you know the ins and outs of corrective LUTs in Final Cut Pro, let's take it one step further and apply a creative LUT. A creative LUT makes your video look more stylized and tells more of a story. And you do this after you've already applied your corrective LUT. So to add a creative LUT, you want to add another custom LUT effect to that same clip. Now you can see here in the inspector, my second custom LUT effect has dropped below my corrective LUT and that is actually the wrong order. You wanna drag that new custom LUT 
above your corrective LUT. So you can import creative LUTs in the same way that I showed you to import corrective LUTs, but you may be wondering, where does one acquire creative LUTs? You can get creative LUTs in so many places online. You can get them through a subscription site like Motion Array. You can purchase them a la carte through third parties, and you can even find free ones if you just search on Google for free custom LUTs you'll get tons of search results. So what I'll typically do is just trial and error, assign different LUTs to this clip until I see one that catches my eye. So when I'm previewing LUTs in this way, what I'm looking for with a creative LUT is do I like what it's doing to the colors in my shot? Is it aesthetically pleasing to me? Is it communicating the message I want to send with this video? And again, these are creative LUTs, so there's really no right or wrong. As long as you are safe within the scopes, it really just is your creative choice how your video is going to look. Now, when they're on full blast, your video is going to look extremely affected. And so at first blush, a LUT might not look that appealing to you, but if you dial down the mix, you can really start to see where the look is coming together. So in this particular case, I really like what this creative LUT is doing to the sky in my shot. And it looks really affected now, but if I dial down both my corrective and creative LUTs, I can get to a point where I think it looks realistic, but also very pretty. And I'm not at all concerned about contrast yet. We're gonna get to that. Right now, I'm really just looking at these colors. And by the way, I just wanna let you know that if you're playing with creative LUTs in Final Cut Pro and they're not looking good to you, it's not you. There's a lot of bad LUTs out there. So once I've downloaded some LUTs and I've decided I'm just never gonna be able to make them work, I delete them out of my app by revealing them in the finder and just deleting them right out so I never have to look at them again because Final Cut Pro does not have a great LUT management system at all. And so you don't wanna keep things that you know you'll never use. So once I've got my video kind of looking the way I want, I am going to now go ahead and apply one of the native color correction tools in Final Cut Pro. Lately, I've been reaching for the color adjustments. And once again, you need to drag your color adjustments to the top of your inspector. This is very important. And here, typically, I won't really mess with the color tones on the color adjustments. I'm typically just playing with the exposures. Again, keeping my eye on the scopes and making sure everything stays within range. So you can clearly see what a transformation we've made to this iPhone video. Here's what it looked like in log. Here's what it looked like with the Apple log LUT applied by Final Cut Pro. Here's what it looked like manually. And then here it is with my creative LUT and my color adjustments. But where things get really magical is with more high quality footage. So let me run through this workflow again with a high quality media shot. So I'm going to apply my corrective LUT and my creative LUT adjust the mix on these a little bit until I'm happy with the way the colors look and then apply those color adjustments, make sure they're at the top of my inspector and add my desired contrast. And if I'm really feeling saucy, I'll head down to the stylized category and select the film grain, drop that on there as well. Make sure I stack it up on top of my inspector and I would definitely switch the style here from iMovie to realistic and then dial down the grain amount until you like what you see. And before I leave you, I do have three more tips for working with LUTs in Final Cut Pro. First of all, I might suggest that you download a free effect from Motion VFX called MLUT. It allows you to import your own LUTs into Final Cut Pro, but preview them in this pop-up window. I think some of you might prefer this over the workflow I've been showing you just using the Final Cut Pro tools, and I will link to MLUT directly down below. And my second tip for you is to create your own custom preset with two custom LUT effects and a color adjustment effect applied in the correct order in your inspector. So you'll just wanna apply two custom LUTs to a clip and the color adjustments and then drag the color adjustments to the top of your inspector. Don't set any LUTs or make any changes to the color adjustments. And then hit this button here, save effects preset. And so now you can easily apply just one effect to your clip 
and your stack is perfect in your inspector. You could also do this with the M LUT effect I just showed you. And my last tip for you is when you're doing color corrections, I recommend that you get up and walk away from your project for a few minutes and come back and look at it with fresh eyes to make sure it doesn't look too stylized. But keep in mind that if you look at one individual shot, you may feel that you've gone too far with your color correction. But if you look at them together in a sequence, the whole thing might actually feel really cohesive and make a lot of sense to you. So when you are using creative LUTs, commit to it in your entire video. That way nothing sticks out as being out of place. I hope this really helped you with your color correction workflows in Final Cut Pro. I wanna thank you for hanging out with me today. Remember, if you wanna know more about Final Cut, check out my courses at jenjager.com. In the meantime, here's some other stuff I think you're gonna love. I'll see you again.